I'm here to tell students that the future of Williams College is your responsibility. The future of Williams College is your responsibility. That you shouldn't take this as some four-year experiment where you get a degree and that's that but you are actually the, the driving force behind this ecosystem that we call the Purple Bubble. And granted, alumni, faculty, staff, trustees, administrators, will play our part, but at the end of the day, the greatness of this institution depends on the battles you fight as students, and it always has. Legend has it that 50 years ago, a group of students petitioned President Sawyer to end the fraternity system. This was no small feat. Fraternities, as I was told, dictated everything in the Williams experience basically outside of the classroom. They knew it would be unpopular, yet they knew that fraternities didn't have a place in the Williams future that they saw. And they were students, just like you. Overworked, overcommitted, waiting to the last second to finish that assignment, students. But they had the courage to see what needed to happen, and Williams was smart enough to answer. Now, unfortunately, this is not always the case. Decisions happen, both large and small, that don't necessarily take the entire voice of the student body into account. I can talk about a couple, but I'll talk about one in particular that changed my Williams experience, not just for my last two years, but even moving forward now as an alum. It was a decision the college made that changed one of the major four pillars that dictate any college student's experience. Because let's be honest, as students, we are pretty simple. We care about what we learn, where we live, and who we live with, what we do on campus, and what we eat. And in the spring of 2010, Williams College took a swing on one of those pillars. I'll never forget it. It was, uh, it was the spring, myself and Manuel Acutia, who we recently were elected College Council co-presidents. We were wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. We were whew, ready to tackle any issue. We, we won the election by 83%, so we felt like we had a mandate from our student body <laughs> that we can do anything. That it was our job, our responsibility to tackle any issue, regardless of who said it, to be the voice for the voiceless. And we sit in, uh, we went to a meeting every week, we met with the dean of the college, and at the time it was, it was Dean Merrill. And we walk into her, her office, thinking it was just gonna be one of our periodic meetings. And we see her sitting there, as well as this other guy, he's bald. <laughs> Steve Class, who at the time was the you know, VP for operations. And what ended up happening was not really a meeting, it was more, I remember it as an intelligence debriefing. Out of nowhere, it was basically, well, if a man, you know, we want to let you know that obviously you know the college is going through a budget, budget constraints and everyone's asked to do more with less and you know, the numbers have kind of shown, and basically the decision's already been done. We'll be closing two dining halls in the fall. Dodd and Greylock will be gone. I was floored. I couldn't believe it. I was thinking so many things. I remember thinking that we are going to be held responsible as the students who allowed the death of Dodd dinners <laughs> and the end of Greylock brunches. And we were. People told us that all the time. I remember thinking, how can a decision this big happen and we not know about it? And we were already one of the more, most in, you know, in the weeds students. Like we knew we had our pulse on the campus even before we were elected. So the fact that we didn't know, we were surprised. We were shocked that this went all the way up the chain and it was already approved and nothing we can do or say would change it. And it wasn't all necessarily that, that we would be losing two dining halls. It was, the, it was the thought process of, was there a, a distrust in students that we wouldn't be able to handle a conversation this, this complex, this delicate, 
that we wouldn't be able to understand that this is more than just we don't have two places where we can eat, but this is talking about the livelihoods of 100 or so staff who work there. Not realizing that in the larger context, we, that faculty and staff didn't get a raise that year. Was it an assumption that we'd be so selfish that we wouldn't be able to see that this is more than just two buildings, that this is a decision that will change the landscape of Williams? Now, anyone who knows Manny knows that he's not one to shy away from stating his opinion. So I was thinking these things, and he was saying these things. <laughs> but, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I, he was right. He was right. But what happened next actually surprised me. It was when the conversation changed. It went from budget numbers and literally breaking down the numbers of the amount of students who swipe at this time in this area, where they're coming from and where they're going. There was all this research that happened. It made sense. The numbers actually made sense to close the dining halls, as much as I hated to see it happen. But when the conversation changed to what can we do to make Williams better for the future. It was when the conversation changed to talk about, let's ensure that the money that we save from this closure, we can reinvest it to make it a better experience for everyone. That we can make sure that students' needs, and even the faculty and staff, and everyone who uses these dining spaces, that they're being taken care of. And it is moments like that that Williams is at its best. And these conversations happen not just talking about dining halls. It also happens when real difficult, ugly stuff happen at Williams. This is a picture of the Stand With Us rally that happened my freshman year. When an incident happened in a freshman dorm that invoked a response, a rallying cry. People literally ran through the libraries collecting people, come to Paresky. People were tired of the status quo, and they wanted change. And subsequently, in discussions, meetings of board meetings, in office hours, those conversations led to claiming Williams Day, which we still have now, which I'm proud of. But it was in those times, in those discussions, that as a student, you learn more about yourself and what you're capable of doing that you don't necessarily get in a classroom, or on the playing field, or in the theater. It is in those discussions, when you're given a rightful, equal seat at the table, to talk with people who are your students, your peers, as well as administrators, deans, faculty members, trustees, whoever. That's what produces game changers, that type of interaction. So at the end, we ask, what difference will we make? When you're sitting there in sign squad, in the black robes, cooking under the sun, waiting to walk across that stage and get that degree that says, I made it. I survived Williams. The goal should not just be that every student is smarter than when they came in, or bigger, faster, stronger athletes or better singers, dancers, or musicians. The goal is that students should be game changers, not afraid to speak up when necessary, regardless of what the audience is. That's helped me in my own personal life. I work for Booz Allen Hamilton, which is a, a consulting firm in DC, and I find myself in meetings with people who are ex-military, They've been in the business for forever, literally with more work experience than I have been alive. I remember being in a meeting, and uh, before it started, people were talking about, oh, you remember Y2K, and like, you know, where were you working, what were you doing, and stuff, and they're kind of going around the room, sharing war stories, and someone asked me, if, what, where were you working, you know, doing the Y2K thing? And uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, well, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I was in fifth grade, <laughs> so I think I was working on my spelling, actually. So. <laughs> and they're surprised. I think not necessarily just because they feel old now, <laughs> but also for the fact that they wouldn't have guessed I was that young. Because 
I don't have a problem speaking up. I don't have a problem being seen as inferior. I don't, I don't have that complex because I did it while at Williams. I'd walk into President Falk's office and we'd, we'd talk about whatever needed to be talked about. And I felt like I had that agency to do it. And that's what I got at Williams. It helped me become a game changer. To be able to see something that you think is the status quo or see inequality and feel that you have the ability to change it. For me, when I was in, you know, when I was a sophomore, my brother and two of our friends, we started a nonprofit called Brick City Alumni Group. The whole idea was let's make an alumni society for the entire city of Newark. We modeled it after the alumni society here. Basically, if we can be the catalyst that allows for agents and people who have gone out from the, from the Newark community to re-engage them and be mentors and leaders to help them guide the next generation of leaders. If we can do that, the possibilities are endless. If it worked for Williams, it can work for Newark. And I remember telling somebody about this and them being like, you know what, son, that's that's pretty ambitious goal for a kid that's still in college. And I remember being, I remember saying, so what? I go to Williams. I go to Williams. A place where I was taught to be a game changer. Because at the end of the day, what difference will we make? And the goal for Williams must be not just to produce students who are smarter after their four years, but who are better husbands and wives, mothers and daughters, better citizens. Because what difference can we make if we're not game changers? And that doesn't happen unless we're given that opportunity to sit at those meetings, to speak up when necessary. If we're not given the opportunity to achieve what we want with the real possibility to fail. It is in those moments that we learn something so valuable that you won't find in a textbook, that you won't, you won't pick up on the field, in a court, or even in a theater. It is that confidence, that agency, that you learn over time by being given that opportunity to be a game changer. Thank you.